<laughs> so we start again. Having some trouble with my phone. Okay. Um, praise the Most High. We have been um, studying Ezekiel, and we went through two studies in Ezekiel. Um, and as we started off with this study of this prophecy of Ezekiel, I, I want to just review a couple of things very quickly. First off, the understanding that the prophet Ezekiel, like all the prophets in the Bible, is relaying a message. And basically, that's all a prophet is. A prophet is a messenger um, from the Most High. Sometimes the message from the Most High is about the future, uh, which is what most people think of a prophet, of somebody telling the future. Sometimes it's about the future. Sometimes it's about what's happening now. Sometimes it's personal to a person or individuals uh, about something that's that's going on in their life that 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 they need to that they're receiving a message from the father about, uh, but it's always uh, a message from the father to the chosen people. It's always a message from the father to the chosen people, and in the Bible, the message is always from, of course, the messenger is always an Israelite. A Hebrew Israelite it is the case here. Ezekiel is not only a Hebrew Israelite, um, but he is a, a Levite. He's of the tribe of Lawayim. He's a priest. Ezekiel also takes place um, as Ezekiel and a large uh, group of Israelites were taken captive into Babylon. Um, the prophecy of the book begins with them as captives in Babylon. And during the course of their captivity, they receive a message that the city is destroyed. So while they were in captivity, this is the first destruction of Jerusalem, the first destruction of Sol the destruction of Solomon's temple. This happened while they were in captivity and during the course of the messages of the book of Ezekiel. Now, I want to point out something today um, that I may not have pointed out before about this prophecy. As we are reading this prophecy, the Most High has been has been actually describing through the prophet to the chosen people what he sees as their condition, how he is looking at them. And as we have been looking, it's not been been very pretty, not been very pretty at all. And that brings me to one of the points that we're going to be covering as we're studying today. Let's look at the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. And let us look at the description that the Messiah gives um, to the Laodicean assembly, which is a representation of the last assembly on planet Earth the last apostate assembly on planet Earth prior to the destruction of planet Earth and the redemption of the true people of Yah. And this is uh, Revelation chapter 3. Um, we're going to read from verse 14, from verse 14 uh, down to verse uh, 20. Actually, we're going to read from verse 14 down to verse 22. Let's look at the, the entire section of the message of the Messiah to the Laodiceans. And also, let us understand, uh, again, Let's, as a reminder, remember now, uh, the Bible did tell us, it does tell us, that uh, in time past, the Most High spoke to us through the prophets, but in these last days, the Most High Yah is speaking to us through His Son. And this is the situation in the book of Revelation. We know that the Father... Uh, gave Messiah this message for his chosen people. And we understand as we're reading Ezekiel, it's the same situation. The father is giving a message to his chosen people to through Ezekiel. And that's why it's very important, brothers and sisters, that we understand who the chosen people are. It's very important because these messages are for them. And it's given to them, it's given to them for them to share, not only for them to receive themselves, obviously, but for them to share with others of the earth. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Revelation chapter 3 from verse 14 to verse 22. Let's take a look. And the angel of the assembly of the Laodiceans write, these things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, 
the beginning of the creation of Yahweh. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, um, excuse me, be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches or the assemblies. Now, brothers and sisters, obviously, we're looking at a situation here which is very similar to, in fact, it's exactly like Ezekiel. It's just that it's in the last days. Um, and, and Ezekiel is also in the last days. But what we're looking at here is a situation where the people that are supposed to be the Most High's chosen people, they're His chosen people, are not recognizing what their true situation really is. That's what we have here. We have a situation where the chosen people are not recognizing what their true situation is. Now, if I had a title, and it'll probably be on the video of today's Ezekiel 16 Part 3 lesson, if I had a title, it would be this. It starts, it starts with a spirit. Did you hear what I said? It starts with a spirit. Brothers and sisters, what we have learned as we have studied the word together over the last few years, one of the things we have learned is obedience is a spirit. It starts with a spirit of the Father's righteousness. Right? Is that correct? Y'all caught that, right? Obedience is a spirit. It starts with the spirit of the Father's righteousness. But that's not all. We have also learned, as we have studied, that disobedience, disobedience, is also a spirit. The Bible actually says that in Ephesians. Let's see. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 1 and 2. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins. Wherein in time past, he's talking about redeemed people now, redeemed people from among the Gentiles. In time past, ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So, obedience is a spirit and disobedience is a spirit. Because we have been born in sin, according to the scriptures, and shapen in iniquity, we are naturally connected to the spirit of disobedience. Now, part of that spirit is a spirit which he addressed here with the Laodiceans. Part of the spirit of disobedience is a spirit of pride. 
pride. Part of the spirit of disobedience is a spirit of pride. And brothers and sisters, the Bible definitely warns a, a pride in terms of haughtiness, in terms of uh, a, a, a belief and an, a, not a, a lack of an understanding of the true condition. Uh, especially a lack of the understanding of the way the creator. See, brothers and sisters, doesn't matter much to me what people think about me. Doesn't matter much to me what people think about me. And, I, and, and if my conscience is clear with regard to what I teach and preach, I don't care what people think. But I will tell you this. I care deeply. I care very much about what the father thinks. I, I, I care very much about what he thinks, about how he looks at me, about how the Messiah is looking at me. I care very much about how my angel is looking at me. I care very much about how the people that I know to be my brothers and sisters in this truth. I do care about how you looking at me. I do. Because if you are connected to the father that I'm connected to, then you are my brother or sister and he can speak through you as well as anyone else to tell me about myself. But in terms outside of that circle, I really don't care. But in that circle is very important. What does the father think about me? What does he see when he looks at me? Is he seeing pride? What spirit is guiding what I do and what I say? What spirit is motivating me to do whatever I do or whatever I say? That, brothers and sisters, is extremely important. And the problem with the Laodicean. See, I'm looking at, I'm looking at the word pride in the Bible. Uh, in in the in my concordance, I'm looking at the word pride. Okay, very it's very uh, interesting. Very interesting. It's 1346 in your Hebrew concordance. It's 1346. I mean, there's several variations, but 1346 seems to be the most uh, the most common one. Can you hear me? Testing one, two, three. 1346. It says ga'awa. Ga'awa. What does it mean? Arrogance or majesty. Excellency. Haughtiness. Highness. Pride. Proudly. Swelling. 1346. Ga'awa. Interesting. Ga'awa. Now, right next to it. This is very interesting. In 1345, 1345, very interesting, is the word Gahawa, which is the majesty of the Most High. They're right next to each other. One is arrogance and one is majesty of the Most High. Look, look. So that a person that's prideful, right, has a, a, a inner belief about themselves in some way that they are like the Most High. And there's a haughtiness that they're above other people and that they are like the most high. Well, where did we hear that before? Where did we read about that spirit before? Where did we, where did we catch that before? We have read about it. Where did we read about a spirit that thinks it's like the most high? Notice. Oh, yes. Both of those places, both Genesis and and the one we're getting ready to read right now, Yeshaya, otherwise known as Isaiah. Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah 14. From verse, uh, let's see, 12 to 14. Isaiah 14, 12 to 14. Notice what it says, Isaiah 14. 12 to 14. Notice what it says here. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? 
How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of Yah. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. That is the origin and root of pride. Yes, he brought that to Eve. He said, you could be a goddess. You can be higher than you are. And in that uh, ambitious endeavor, all of us have received the spirit of disobedience and sin. Brothers and sisters, let us be very clear. There is only one God. <laughs> There's only one true God. Y'all understand that? There's not two. There's only one most high. See, he's called the most high because he is what? The most high. There's none higher. When he went to go swear and make a promise to Abraham, he said, I swear by myself. You remember that? He said, that, I swear by myself, I'm going to bless you, he told Abraham. Why did he have to do that? Because there is none higher than him. And he asked the question. He asked the question. He asked a, a rhetorical question. Even in Isaiah, he said, is there any beside me? He said, no, I know not any. I know not any. There is none higher. So brothers and sisters, whatever we endeavor to be, that is why the Most High counsels us. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Because that spirit is the spirit of Lucifer, Asatan, who is trying to be like the Most High. See, people get this twisted. And let's make this very plain for, for, for not only for us, but anybody that comes after us that comes with the spirit of confusion. Look, very plainly. When the Most High said, he made man in his image. He did not mean that man was going to be God. When he said he was making man in his image, what he means is the character of man, the look of man was going to be like the creator. It's like this. Very simple, brothers and sisters. You ever see a young man and you know the young man's father? And you look at the young man and you cannot believe the similarity between this young man and his father. You ever experienced that? Like you see, you know the man, you know the boy's father and you're looking at the boy and you like, boy, I mean, man, you look like he, they, the term that we use is you look like he spit you out. You ever heard that? Now, that's not saying that the young man is his father. It's saying that the young man was created in the image of his father. He may look like the, the father. He may stand like the father. His voice might sound like the father. He may even think like the father, but he is not the father. Everybody got me? Testing one, two, three. So you got groups out here that think just because it says we're made in the image of the Most High that we ourselves are some sort of God. This is not true. As a matter of fact, this is the beginning of the fall because this is what, what Eve fell on thinking that she could be a goddess. And what that pride and that spirit does, brothers and sisters, is it causes us to lose, it blinds us, it causes us to lose sight of who we really are. It really, it causes us to lose sight and to be blinded as to who we are and, and even more worse than that, who we serve. Who we serve. You understand? Testing one, two, three. So, so we lose sight of our true situation, our true condition. We lose sight of who we are as servants of the creator. And we start to start to think we also are creator ourselves. We start to become prideful in that. And brothers and sisters, especially this is true. This is especially true in the religious world because, because we can see it started with Asatan. And we can see also, as we have already studied in the book of Revelation, the Bible says that Asatan deceiveth the whole 
world. You see, brothers and sisters, you don't always have to go around beating your chest and putting your chin up to show that you're hearty and prideful. All you have to do is not trust the Father and trust anything else above the Father, including yourself. If you trust yourself above the Father, you have just made a God out of yourself. Does that make sense, brothers and sisters? If you are trusting any human being, any human being, anyone above the Father and above His Word, you have just created a God. If you are trusting any institution, any church, denomination, Above the Father and His Word, you have made that church, that institution, into a God. See? There's many ways to fall into this trap. Now, we can see with the Laodicean church, uh, obviously the Messiah came straight. And you can see the same thing as we're going to study Ezekiel. He comes very straight. Brothers and sisters, my wife and I were discussing this, this today. We're discussing this this morning. My wife was marveling. Um, because um, she has many friends that she has stayed in touch with of our former religious associations. Now, me, myself, um, I have not stayed in touch with them, the people of our former religious associations. Not because I haven't wanted to, uh, um, actually. It's because they have cut themselves off from me and I ain't chasing them because, hey... I'm on to, on to other things. You understand? They don't want to hear what, 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 what we have. So my wife, but she has kept associations with our former religious affiliation through Facebook mostly. And so she uh, posts things on Facebook where she hopes they look at it that maybe they might, you know, they might open up to the truth a little bit. But she noticed today, uh, she posted something that I had put out and nobody wanted to look at it. And she was frustrated. She said, man, why don't they ever want to even look at it? It's true. Why don't they ever? And, and you know what it is, brothers and sisters, we were talking about this today. Brothers and sisters, as part of the deception that Asatan is putting on people, have you noticed that people in the religious world, have you noticed that people in the religious world, do not want straight truth. Yeah, I, have you noticed that? Like, if you come straight, like arrow straight from the word, they really don't want that. They they really don't want that. And, and you know why? You you th you know what it is, brothers and sisters. We have to understand uh, the power. Listen carefully. The power of deception and brainwashing. We really. Understand this, and I'm not saying we should all have PhDs in, uh, in psychology. I'm not suggesting that. But just from the biblical perspective, understanding what it's saying when it says, Asatan deceiveth the whole world, and we being witnesses watching it. Now, what happens? Brothers and sisters, what happens? And especially, I, can, I cannot speak uh, in terms of Islam, because I, I, I've never been in a service in uh in a mosque. So I can't speak about that. But I have been in, and I can't speak about a Buddhist temple or a Hindu temple. I can't speak on those things because I haven't been in there. Like I don't believe what that. I've, I've read their teachings and I know they go against what I believe, but I, I can't speak on their services because I haven't been in there. But what I do know is I have been in many, many decades of Christian services. And what I have noticed, brothers and sisters, and tell me if you have, if you have experienced this, in your, if you can bear witness to what I'm about to bear witness to. They talk things that are very cursory, very, very surface level. They don't get deep into anything. Everything is very cursory, very surface level. And not only that, not only that, it is designed to touch your emotions. It's surface level, but it's designed to touch your emotions, to get you excited in some way, to feel some sort of way. And they usually like to use somebody that can sing to do that. They use, that's why they always have special, you know, special music, right? They have special music because they're trying to get your emotions in a certain way. And then they come with this surface level doctrine. They never get too deep into anything. It's all surface level. And what that does, brothers and sisters, is it, I'm going to use a big word, excuse me, it inculcates your mind. I mean, it, 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 it break, it, it, it get, puts a barrier in your mind so that if somebody was to come with something straight, first of all, if they come with something straight from the word, you are being told by those same people that give you the cursory stuff. Hey, don't mess around with that. Uh-uh, don't mess around with that. 
And, and at the same time, a straight truth hits your heart. The Bible says it's like a hammer. That's what the Bible said. It's like a sword that pierces the joints. So when the straight truth comes, you got this combination of the cursory spirit on you. And you've been told, hey, don't mess with that. So when that feeling of conviction hits you really hard, you run from it. You run from it. You don't want nothing to do with it. Because you're not comfortable with it. Because you're used to the surface level stuff. You're not used to anything that really pricks your heart in a difficult way. And what ends up happening, brothers and sisters, as a result of this, what ends up happening is when times get hard, okay, and they do get hard for everybody. You remember now, Messiah said, if you listen to him, you built your house on the rock. But if you don't listen to him, you built your house on the, on the sand. But, when he, but when, he, when he spoke those words, he said the storm came to both houses. The storm came to the house built on the sand and the storm came to the house built on the rock. The difference was the one built on the rock was able to stand. You see what ends up happening. Listen carefully. People that trust in these cursory Beliefs and don't go deep into the word, into the straight truth of the word alone. Not used to the meat of the word, not even drinking the milk of the word, drinking some spoiled milk that's watered down with wine and getting drunk, spiritually speaking. When these people come to the storm, they begin, listen carefully, they begin to trust in man. They don't look to the most high. They don't even, I've seen people in these situations that go to these churches for decades. And they, when they get into it real hard, they get real sick. Like somebody told them you got three weeks to live. They can't even pray. They can't even pray. I've seen it. Why can't they pray? And my wife and I have seen it together. And we say, we marvel. Why can't they pray? They're supposed to be Christians. They go to church. When the times get rough, the last thing they think about is prayer. They be calling this one. They be calling that one. They be looking for this. They be looking for that. They be, if they sick, they got cancer, they will fly all over the earth for some miracle cure. Spend their last dime. Get GoFundMe pages and have people spending tens of thousands of dollars because they trust in, in man. Because you, they have never learned to trust the most high. Because they have never received any straight truth. See, because the Most High brings truth and he brings it straight. He says he does it because he loves us. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, he says. As many as I love. So he's not doing it because he's trying to break on us. He's trying to break us from the wine of Babylon, from the spell of sin that we are caught up in, from the blindness of pride that we are filled with and we don't realize it he's trying his best to break us from that so he bringing it straight he bringing it strong he trying to spank us but we don't want to receive it we don't want to receive it just like the Laodiceans he said they, they they had an idea that they were okay that they had they had the right clothes that they were they had the right insight that they had the right spirit and he said no y'all blind y'all naked y'all miserable y'all look wretched y'all make me sick I'm going to spit you out. And the word spew here in the Greek is the word vomit. Y'all make me sick. I'm going to vomit you out. You making, my, you making me sick to my stomach to look at y'all. That's how the Messiah views this present day church. This present day Hebrew. These Laodiceans are representations of the people that the Messiah said, the children of the kingdom shall be cast out. Remember he said, he said, many shall come from the east and the west and shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of Yah. He said, but the children of the kingdom shall be cast out. And he said, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There are people that should know better. People that are really, they should know better. We've been all in this struggle together and they still, they, pride, man. Pride in the wine of Babylon got them completely deceived. Brothers and sisters, let us endeavor by the grace of the Most High to always consult his spirit of righteousness and truth. Let us endeavor that to always ask him, the Almighty, Al Shaddai, to, to remove from us the spirit of disobedience. Let us endeavor to ask him all the time, please lead and guide me in the way I should go so I can give you the praise, the honor, and the glory that's due your name. Cause me to walk in the truth all the time. Brothers and sisters, that's our safeguard right there. That's our protection right there. You see, brothers and sisters, people have been deceived into thinking 
that if they go to church and they're faithful in their church and they give their they last dollars to this pastor and this church and this denomination and they tithe or whatever they call it, that they're going to go to heaven. That they're going to go to the kingdom and they're going to be there with white Jesus. But they're, you know, they're going to be severely uh, disappointed. Very disappointed. Very, very disappointed. Because brothers and sisters, how can a person think, listen to me carefully, that they're going to skip into the gates of the new Jerusalem, having never taken the decided stand for the truth of the word of the king of the earth. Messiah is the king of the earth. You see, John the Baptist took a stand and that stand cost him to have his head cut off. So you trying to say to me that you want to you want to eat at the same tree of life as John the Baptist and, and, and the black man Messiah when when you wouldn't even take a stand for the truth on the earth when you had opportunity? I mean, you think really that's fair? You think really that's right? You, you, people are really thinking that they're you know going to go into the kingdom and they haven't sacrificed anything. They haven't stood for anything. They haven't ever. Take a stand on the conviction that the Spirit of the Father brought to their heart. How do they think they're going to stand? And that's why, brothers and sisters, as we're studying the book of Ezekiel, that's why, that's why the punishment is so stern. That's why the spanking is so hard. He's trying to save us. He's trying his best to save us. You know, I think of my mother in these situations. I love my mother. Don't get me wrong. Just like any brother, I love my mother. But my mother got some issues. I mean, we all do. But let me tell you a little bit about my mother. And I want y'all, please, please pray for my mother, if you will. I really ask that you pray for my mother. Pray for old Gabar Sadak's mother. She needs it. But let me tell you a little bit about my mother. My mother was raised in Jamaica. West Indies. Now, a lot of people that come to the United States from Jamaica, West Indies, come from pretty poor backgrounds. Like they struggle in Jamaica and they come over to this country, to the United States, to, to you know, try to make something better, to try to build a better life for themselves. They come from some poverty situations, many of them, not all, but many. My mother's situation was not so. We were very fortunate in that, in that regard. My great grandfather was a very industrious man. And he and he started a business where he used to make uh, parts for for ships and for boats, and uh, and he did very well at this. And and he built and he used his money when he had money and he started building it. He started using it to buy houses, even Jamaica, he'd buy houses and rent them out, rent real estate out. He buy. It. Then what happened? World War II came, and his business, you know, his 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 ship business went to nothing. But because he had all the houses, you see, he still had all the real estate. Even in Jamaica, he was doing okay. So my mother, my grandmother, left my mother to come to the United States to make a better life for herself. So she left my mother with my great grandparents, and my great grandparents and my great aunts and uncles proceeded to spoil my mother. I mean, she didn't know what it was like to be in want of anything. I mean, she had everything she wanted. Maids, servants, you know, people to clean for her, people to do her clothes, people to to uh, cook for her. And let me tell you something, brothers and sisters, are you listening? The worst thing you can do to any child is spoil them. I know it sounds it sounds cute, right? We like to spoil the children sometimes. The worst thing, if, if you had, if you were abused, it's terrible. If you were physically abused, it's horrible. But you should count blessings that you weren't spoiled. Because a spoiled person, see, abused people, um, they can recover from that. But it's very difficult for a person to recover from being spoiled. It's, it's very difficult. You, you think it's very difficult. A person that's spoiled can't live with themselves and they can't live with anybody else. Everything is always somebody else's fault with somebody that's spoiled. Okay? That, that, that's, and unfortunately, my mother was raised that way. That's how she was raised. So, so I've been praying for her. See, I've been praying for her. And, and my mother had a good job. She had a good situation. She's lost all of that. And right now she lives in a certain city in an apartment and she's struggling. But see, I understand. And the Most High will not let me give her anything. He will not let me. Why? Because he's trying to do what? He's trying to save her. I understand that. He's trying to save her. 
Okay? I don't know if she's going to make it or not. That's why I ask you all to pray for her like I pray for her every day. But I want you all to understand, a spoiled man is hard to get over. When you spoil and you got pride with it, ooh, it's hard. It's hard. Hard to get over. Now, my mother's done a lot of good things. She helped a lot of people. She taught me about the black struggle in this country. She did. She taught me about that. She sent me to go live with my mother, my grandmother and my aunt to who taught me Bible verses. And that's how I got started in the word when I was a little boy. So she did a lot of good. But the most high is trying to have her character be like his. And so he's really he's really got her struggling because he spanks people hard when he's trying to save them. You understand? He spanks people hard. When he's trying to save them. He does. Okay. That's why he says as many as I love. I rebuke and chasten. He wants us to be zealous and repent. He wants to give us. He wants to ultimately give us. Of his spirit. Of righteousness and truth. That's what he wants. When he puts his spirit on us. Brothers and sisters. When he puts his spirit on us. Man there's no such peace like that. There's no such joy like that. There's a blessing in having the Father's Spirit resting on you. He wants people to have that, but he cannot just put it on you when you are messed up, when you're prideful. He can't do it. So he has to spank you and bring you low with the hope that once he brings you low, you will look up to him and call out for him. And then he can redeem you. See, it takes repentance to receive the gifts. It takes repentance. Our father Adam sinned against our heavenly father. Eve sinned against the father. It takes repentance for them to be brought back. He's not asking for us to make ourselves good because he knows we can't. But it takes repentance for us to be receiving of his spirit of righteousness. I know this for myself because apple don't fall far from the tree. Now, I wasn't spoiled, fortunately. I was not spoiled. My father made sure of that. But I do have that same spirit, the seed of pride. And I did look after the money. I was heavy after that for a while. And the Most High had to spank me in order to get me back to himself. And I praise his holy name that he did it. But everything that we're seeing here in the book of Revelation and, and in turn in Ezekiel is what we're looking at is a, a, a husband that has been done wrong by a spoiled wife and he's trying to bring her back to himself. And he's got to bring her hard. He's got to bring her through some stuff. He's taken away all that he gave her and he's given her over to the people that she want to hang with who are really her enemies and she don't realize. It. You understand? Let's take a look. Ezekiel chapter 16. Ezekiel chapter 16. Ezekiel 16. Um, let's start. I'm going to start at verse um, 20 of Ezekiel 16. And let's start with tonight. Let's go from verse 20 down to verse 28, Ezekiel 16, 20 to 28, which we read already, but we just finishing our review here. Moreover, thou hast taken thy sons and thy daughters, whom thou hast borne unto me, and these hast thou sacrificed unto them to be devoured. Is this of thy whoredoms a small matter, that thou hast slain my children and delivered them to cause them to pass through the fire for them? In all thine abominations and thy whoredoms, thou hast not remembered the days of thy youth when thou wast naked and bare and wast polluted in thy blood. And it came to pass after all thy wickedness, woe, woe unto thee, saith the Most High Yahweh, that thou hast also built unto thee an eminent place and hast made thee an high place. In every street, and thou hast built thy high place at every head of the way, and hast made thy beauty to be abhorred, and hast opened thy feet to every one that passeth by, and multiplied thy whoredoms. Thou hast also committed fornication with the Egyptians, thy neighbors, great of flesh, and hast increased thy whoredoms to provoke me to anger. Behold, therefore, I have stretched out my hand over thee, and have diminished thine ordinary food. 
and delivered thee into the will of them that hate thee, the daughters of the Philistines, which are ashamed of thy lewd way. Thou hast played the whore also with the Assyrians, because thou wast unsatiable. Yea, thou hast played the harlot with them, and yet couldst not be satisfied. Brothers and sisters, I said this before, I will say it again. It begins with a spirit. He's talking to his people. He's telling them what he sees. They don't look at themselves like this. I'm sure if you would have asked the brothers that was listening to Ezekiel speak these words, they would not have thought of themselves like this. But this is exactly how the creator was looking at them. This is how he thought about them. That was insatiable. I mean, you can't get enough of being a whore. You can't get enough of being a whore. You're going crazy for that thing. That uncircumcised thing you're going crazy for. That's what he's describing here. So brothers and sisters, notice what happens. It starts with pride. Remember? He starts with pride. And then it develops into something low. Brothers and sisters, let me just break this down for you. Remember we read just a few minutes ago. This whole thing started. With a fallen angel named Lucifer. How that angel decided he was going to be like the Most High. He was the first one to exercise pride. Now, I think you will agree homosexuality, uh, lesbianism uh, 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 are, are against the Most High. I think you will agree that harlotry is against the Most High. I think you will agree homosexuality, the sodomy. I think you will agree it's against the Most High. The word does plainly say that. But where did all these aver uh, perversions originate? In the mind of that fallen angel. That's where it originated. All of these perversions originated in the mind of the fallen angel. And through that spirit, the spirit of pride started with him. And all of these perversions come behind it. Brothers and sisters, you see where this stuff leads? And then especially, listen carefully now, especially if you are one of the chosen people. See, that's important because if you're of the chosen people, then Asatan fully knows that the Most High has chosen you especially unto himself. Therefore, he hates you more than anything else. He hates you more than the heathen. See, the heathen are his chosen people. He hates you because you both to belong to Yah. Therefore, He's going to bring you lower than he can bring anybody. He's going to do unto you what he, the, the most dastardly things he's going to bring you through. Because he wants you to look the worst. You see, brothers and sisters, that's what pornography is all about. Pornography. Pornography is the degradation of sex. is the degradation of the man. And it's the degradation of... Of the woman. That's what pornography is. People think it's just sex. See, that's people that don't understand what sex is about. Let me explain to you. The Bible says, Yah is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The Bible says that Yah is light and in him is no darkness at all. The Bible says that man, Adam, was made in the image of Yah. That means that he's not just a physical being, but he's a spiritual being. Wait a minute. I want to make sure you're following me so far. He's not just a body, but he's a spirit as well. It comes together. It says also that Eve was made out of a rib taken from his body. And when they come together, when the two people come together, those two people that look like the color of dirt, when they come together, it's not just a physical action. It's a spiritual action. You see, but what Asatan has done is he has just highlighted the physical action. And he separated it from the spirit of the father and puts his own spirit on it and degrades the man and the woman in it. So that you can see very little difference between how a dog, a male dog goes after a female dog and how a man goes after a woman. You can see very little difference. They sniff around like the woman in heat, right? And she act like that, right? You see very little difference. 
So he's trying to degrade the whole thing, you see. And this is just a basic principle that you can understand. Anything that the Most High has created, I don't care if it's the commandments, the Sabbath, the, the feasts, Asatan takes what the Most High created and perverts it and makes it low. That's what he does. Most High created Sabbath, Asatan created Sunday. Most High created the sun, Asatan got people worshiping the sun. Hmm? Most High created the man and the woman to have sex, to come together in love and passion and spirit. Asatan creates pornography. Where two people that don't even know each other, don't even care about each other, can just be doing each other up and they call it art. And it's a degradation to the woman. It's a degradation to the man. It's a degradation to the institution of lovemaking. It's a degradation to what the Most High created. That's what he does. It starts with the spirit of disobedience. It starts with a spirit. And from that spirit, he can really drag you down, especially if you're an Israelite. He, he really wants to drag you down. And that's why he's very straight with us in these last days. Very straight in the book of Revelation. The Messiah talks very straight, very direct. And he's using the Philadelphia 144,000 that come out of the church of Philadelphia. He's using them to bring this message straight and correct. And brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. See, the, the, the final messages that come out of the, 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 the mouths of the teachers like myself and others around the earth, the final messages are going to be very direct and straight messages. And brothers and sisters, I'm going to be honest with you, the majority of people just not going to receive it because of these churches that teach this watered down gospel where people are not used to receiving that straight truth. They don't want it. But the people that understand that man fails them, and that's what happens, man will fail you. The people that understand that want something deeper than what man can offer, they're looking for something higher than that. They're going to be hearing these messages, and it's going to be, they, they not even may not understand. I've seen it work. They may not even understand it, but they're saying, this is kind of, this is what I've been looking for. I don't know what it is, but I'm drawn to it. And at first they may even think it's the messenger. No, it's not the messenger. It's the Father's Spirit that's touching your heart and giving you what you've been looking for your whole life. And it's deep. And it's powerful. And it's what you want. And not everybody going to want that. We talked about two Jerusalems and two Israels when we started this chapter. Because the second manifestation of the nation is going to be a manifestation of a people <laughs> that is in love with straight truth, in love with the straight truth, love the Father Spirit, and they will do anything for the Father Spirit, and they won't do anything that risks it. See, that is why, you see, I've been married 34 years. 34 years my wife and I have been married, right? There have been people married longer than that. But I want to tell you, I'm being honest with you. You know, I love my wife. My wife and I, she'll tell you. I mean, we, we close like, we close like glue. She's my best friend. You know, all the things, you, she's your soulmate. She is all of that. I'm not lying to you. But shoot, there were times, man, where if I could have strangled this woman. <laughs> And there were times where if she could have strangled me, you hear it? I mean, look, I ain't please. If somebody gonna be honest, right? Shoot, there was a lot of years where I was like, man, Lord, why you bring me this woman? Can you just can I get can you get me somebody else? And there were times where she was like, where you get this nigga from? Can you where where he come from? So, brothers and sisters, but, but over time, over time now, through trusting the most high, we like magnets now. Everything is on a higher level because of the Father's spirit. And she trusts, she don't worry about, if I go out somewhere and I'm with people, she not worried about some other woman. 
Because you don't care how fine the woman is. And she don't got to worry about it. Why? It's not because I love her so much, though I do. It's because I love the Father's spirit so much. And I would do nothing to jeopardize losing his spirit upon me. And I don't care, as cute as my wife is, if some dude came up to her and started trying to do something, I'm not worried about her because I know she also, I know she wants the Father's spirit. She wants to please the Father. Therefore, she's going to do what's right all the time. And when we come together, it's because of the spirit of the Father. And that brings everything to a heightened level. Everything to a heightened level. Because of the Father's Spirit. And that's what he wants for his people. That's what he's trying. So he's here telling our fathers how harlotry is messing them up. How th that pride that they started with is going, is, is causing them to go down the wrong road. Causing them to think they're the most high. Causing them to lose the Father's Spirit. And he's spanking them. Here they are. They're in captivity. The book of Ezekiel is taking place with them in Babylon. The city's about to be destroyed. The temple's about to be destroyed. They're in their enemy's land. And they still prideful. And he got to speak straight to them. Wait a minute. That sounds familiar. Is that us? Here we are. In our enemy's land. Here, here we are in the land. We only citizens. It's, listen, you know when we become citizens of this land? When there's a war and they want us to die in it, then we citizens. But when it's time for us to be really equal, forget it. I mean, you got forget it. Forget it. And you know, if you've been around long enough, I'm telling you the truth, right? Forget it. You know, um, my, uh, Martin Luther King said that he was tired before he was murdered. He said, I'm tired. He said, I'm tired. Of trying to fight for something that should have been mine upon birth. What was he talking about? When certain people are born in this country, they got certain rights and privileges that come with being born in the United States of America. Certain people. But certain people have to fight to claim those rights and privileges because of who they are or what color they are. That's the truth about it. You see, brothers and sisters, it's a blessing. And I want to tell you, first of all, let me talk to my, let me talk to my Caucasian brothers and sisters that come into this truth. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are escaping <laughs> destruction that's coming to a, millions of your cousins. And you, you are blessed and your family is blessed. That, I'm going to just tell you that. Because this, it's coming, man. It's, destruction is coming. But if you are born into this, the, the bloodline, you born into the bloodline, let me explain to you. They brought you and my fathers and your fathers over here in chains. They did not bring you over here in chains for you to be equal with them. I want to make sure you hear me. They did not bring you over here in chains in the bottom and the holes of slave ships for you to be equal with them. They brought you in chains for you to work for them. Listen to me carefully now. They brought you in chains for you to work for them. Now think of think of think of yourself now. You got a slave. You drag this slave from another country to work for you. You beat this slave. You might even have sex with some of the slaves, have babies with them, and then become more slaves. Now, it's just human nature. That as time goes by and these slaves start to get a little taste of some sort of rights. That you're going to be scared. Why would you be scared? Because you know what you did to them. And you know what you did to their families. You know what you did in the past. And you're afraid that if they ever get any type of advantage over you. You know what may happen, right? They're going to, they may turn on you and kill you. That's only natural. And you know what? We can't say that that won't happen, right? Only we know what the Most High shows us is going to happen. Yes, of course, it's natural for there to be retribution. It's natural. And brothers and sisters, I am only saying this for us to really have a clear understanding that of what the situation really is. You're never going to be equal with the people that whose, fam, whose, whose ancestors brought you here 
in slave chains. You're just not going to be because simple because of the fear. They're scared that if you ever got power, real power, so that you're really equal with them, they're scared of the retribution. And they're right to be, I'm saying they are right to be scared. That's why I say I'm not trying to advocate violence. What I am advocating is for us to follow the father. Let them be scared if they're going to be scared. See, if you start fighting with them and start marching on streets and stuff, that's not going to get it done. The father wants us to seek his face, to seek his spirit, because when Messiah come and he's going to come. And that brings me to another point as we going through Ezekiel here. I heard a brother, and I believe the brother is sincere. Let me just say that off the top. But he was saying, you know, as black people, we shouldn't be waiting for no God to come out of the sky and save us. Ain't no God coming out of the sky to save us. We're going to have to save ourselves. And I could see he was angry, and I could see he didn't understand. So let me explain. Obviously, the Bible says that there is a God coming out of the sky to save us. But even if you wanted to look at it on a cursor, on, on a physical level, Look at it this way. Is not the sun in the sky? The sun shines in the sky. And if you look at it too long, it will blind you. It's a power that's hanging in the sky. Right? It's there. That's no, the sun is no figment of your imagination. It's, it's there. What about the wind? The wind is no figment of your imagination. It blows where it comes and it can cause destructive power. I mean, a wind can come right and create a hurricane or a tornado or a typhoon and blow down whole cities, right? A wind is powerful. You can't see where it's coming from. It just comes out of nowhere. And, 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 it, and you don't even know when it's going to stop. When it hits a place, people praying that it stop, but they don't know how long it's going to last. Or when it's going to stop. You know, they had that one that hit Houston a couple of years ago. They said, oh, it's going to hit and be out in a couple of hours. And that thing came on there and then sat there and destroyed that whole city for a minute before it moved away. Be praying that that wind go. You don't know when it's going to go and how long it's going to stay or where it's coming from or where it's going. Also, a bird, an eagle or uh, uh, any bird. Birds seem to come out of nowhere. They come out the sky. You don't know where they're flying from. You don't know where they're flying to. You hear they're flying south, but you don't know where they're going. Right? They just disappear. <laughs> they just fly in and they fly out. They fly in and they fly out. You don't know where they're coming from. You don't know where they're going. You see something dead on the street, you're going to see some vultures. You don't know where them vultures come from, but they know there's something dead out there and they're going to eat it. They fly in. Then they fly away. They're gone. Right? Well, the one who made the vulture and the bird, the one who made the wind and the one that made the sun, he himself can fly in if he wants to. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? The creator of the, of the sun, the creator of the wind, the creator of the bird, he can fly in and fly out and disappear if he wants to. He could do the same thing all them other things do if he wants to. Okay? Because he's the creator. Of, there's a creator of all those things. And he can do what he, whatever his creation can do, of course he could do. And he had already told us he's going to be flying in. So we can believe that he's coming. And we need to be ready, which is why we are studying Ezekiel. We need to be prepared. Let us continue. Ezekiel chapter 16. I'm going to read from verse 29, from verse 29 down to verse 37. Ezekiel chapter 16 from 29 to 37. Notice what it says. Moreover. Thou hast moreover multiplied thy fornication in the land of Canaan unto Chaldea, and yet thou hast not satisfied, thou hast not satisfied therewith. How weak is thy heart, said the Most High Yahweh, seeing thou doest all these things, the work of an imperious, whorish woman, in that thou buildest thine eminent place in the head of every way, and makest thine high place in every street, and has not been as an harlot, in that thou scornest higher. Ooh, that's powerful. But as a wife that commits adultery, which taketh strangers instead of her husband. They give gifts to all whores, but thou givest thy gifts to all thy lovers, and hirest them, that they may come unto thee on every side for thy whoredom. And the contrary is in thee from other women in thy whoredoms, whereas none followeth thee to commit whoredoms, in that thou givest a reward, and no reward is given unto thee. Therefore thou art contrary. Wherefore, O harlot, hear the word of Yahweh. 
Thus saith the Most High Yahweh, because thy filthiness was poured out and thy nakedness discovered through thy whoredoms with thy lovers and with all thy idols of thy abominations by the blood of thy children, which thou didst give unto them, behold, therefore I will gather all thy lovers with whom thou hast taken pleasure and all them that thou hast loved with all them that thou hast hated. I will even gather them round about against thee and will discover thy nakedness unto them that they may see all thy nakedness. You see what's going on here, brothers and sisters? He's causing his former wife that cheated on him, which is the nation, the city, and the nation, he's causing her to be embarrassed. He's causing her to be the biggest of whores. I mean, he said whores get paid for selling their body, but you pay others to abuse you. How sick is that? You know there's people that do that in the earth today? Yeah, there's people that do that, actually. They pay people to abuse them. They do that. Oh, yeah. I've seen that. I mean, I've seen it. But that's what's happening here. He's saying to the nation, I'm going to bring you to a situation where your enemies that hate you, they're going to abuse you and you're going to be begging them. You're going to be paying them to abuse you. I'm going to put you in. You want to be you want to be like that? I'm going to put you into this thing hard. And brothers and sisters, has he not done it? Is that not our situation? Has he not done it? We are in a situation where we are embarrassed. We are confused of face. There's no question about it. Listen, if you, I, I, I say this before, I say it again. In the United States of America, okay, you go to a person that's of Italian descent. That person can tell you, I'm, my, my, my descendants are from Italy. They can even do a DNA test to my descendants from Italy. And if they know any of their blood relatives, they can tell you that my aunt's from here, my uncle's from here. They can say, I'm Irish, I'm from Ireland, blah, 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 blah. They can name us exact country. Italy, Ireland, Germany, Poland, the UK. They can name countries, right? They know where they're from. You go ask a, a Mexican, where you people from? We from, we from Santa Clara or someplace. We from Mexico and this is the city we come from. You ask the Korean. You go ask the Chinese. They can tell you. But you ask a black man, where you from? Um, I'm from New York. No, no, where you from? Where you people from? Um, I'm from Jamaica. Jamaica? Well, how did, where, where were you before you came to Jamaica? Didn't they take slaves to Jamaica? What was your name? Where, what, what country in Africa are you from? I, I don't know. Some, some country in West Africa somewhere. I don't know. Who was your people? What language did you speak? I don't know. What was your name? I don't know. Irish can tell you my name was McElroy or Italians can say my name was Giuseppe. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but what, what was your name? I don't know. What my name was. And you wonder why we going crazy over here. You wonder why the kids are going crazy over here. Huh? Brothers and sisters, we praise the most high because this awakening shows us who we are. Now we know who we are. We are the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We are the rebellious children that tried to escape into West Africa and was brought over here as slaves as our Heavenly Father said we would be. We have been embarrassed. We have been brought low. We are the tail and not the head. We are in our enemy's land and they hate us. They hate us. You see, brothers and sisters, make no mistake. I, I know this called KBZ. I don't hate you. Look, you remember what I said, man? They did not bring us here to be equal with them. Oh, they yeah, love us as long as we are not really equal with them. As long as as a nation, as a group, as the 40-something million, we're not equal with them. If that was ever to happen, brothers and sisters, you would see a whole different situation. You see, that's why you got, that's why you got these skinheads and you got these people out here voting for Trump and all that. Because they're scared. And they should be. They should be scared. It's not... Us, they need to be scared of. See, that's their flesh. That's their carnal nature. They, 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 they in the flesh and not in the spirit. They don't understand. They need to be scared of the Heavenly Father. 
They need to be scared of the true Messiah, not that white one that's printed on all of these church buildings. They need to be scared of the true Messiah. They need to be scared of the Father because it's him that's going to bring the retribution. It's the armies that we read about that's going to bring the noise. They need to be scared of them. And understanding of who we are as their chosen people, they need to understand that. That's where they need to be scared, but they're not going to believe that. They don't believe that. They don't want to hear that. And that's their business. But that's how it is, brothers and sisters. You see, it's not because we're going to have any revolution. It's not that. We're not going to have to take up any guns to protect ourselves and have armies against these, these governments here. No, 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 no. When Messiah come on the throne, when he come and he, and, and he bring with him the angels, thousands and tens of thousands and thousands and thousands of angels, and they come. And he takes the kingdom and brings us to the kingdom. And brings the new Jerusalem down. That's when people need to be scared. That's when they need to be scared. And then he, he builds us up over the thousand years. And then we go out with swords. That's when there's going to be a problem. There's going to be a problem. See, now we not. Now I admonish all of us. Seek the Father's spirit. He's going to bring the noise. We don't have to worry about it. They, they're not going to get away with anything. See, this last 400 years, especially that they've been getting away with all this stuff, that's okay. And by the way, I'm not into this 400 years 2019 thing. I'm just telling you. That's not the prophecy. But I'm just saying they've been doing this for more than 400 years to us here. They're not getting away with anything. Nobody is getting away with anything. 400 years is nothing compared to 10,000 and above and beyond. Because that's what we're going to be dealing with. Okay. So brothers and sisters. Take heed. Notice what he's calling our fathers. Notice how he sees us. Even today. Notice how he's looking at us. Notice what he says about us. I will even gather them round about against thee. And will discover thy nakedness unto them. That they may all see thy nakedness. Have you noticed? See. See. In the 90s, right? I don't know if y'all, some of y'all are old enough to know what I'm about to say, but some of y'all are. In the 90s, we had a thing called gangster rap. Where you had brothers that was actually, you know, coming out of these ghettos and they were tough and they had to deal drugs and they rapped about it. They rapped about their experience. They rapped about how they used to live. You had people like Tupac. You had, you know, people like Biggie Smalls. You had people that was rapping about the experience of growing up in these places. That was in the 90s. You know what you got today? You got young black males that are homosexuals that are rapping. That's what you got today. You got young black males that are dressing like women. That's what you got today. See? They're bringing us, they're, they're bringing us naked. They're, they're, they're bringing us low. And, and, and you wonder, what's going on? I mean, what happened? We used to be wearing baggy pants and Tim Timberland shoes. Now they're wearing tight, tight stuff. They're wearing bras and pumps. And they putting makeup on. These are the men. That's what's happening now. That's what's happening. And you got the woman lusting after the other woman. That's what's happening now. And the brothers and sisters is going to get worse. See, that's why we're reading this. Because he's showing us all of this. He's showing us everything that I'm telling you, he, we just read about, is happening right now. Right? Everything is happening right now. This is what the bloodline is going through right now. And the Most High is doing it. Why? Notice. Notice again. Let's just read this last part. Let's read this last part. Ezekiel 16. From verse 38 down to verse 45. Notice what it says. And I will judge thee as women that break wedlock and shed blood 
and shed blood, that women that break red lock and shed blood are judged. And I will give thee blood in fury and jealousy. And I will also give thee into their hand. And they shall throw down thine eminent place and shall break down thy high places. They shall strip thee also of thy clothes and shall take thy fair jewels and leave thee naked and bare. And they shall also bring up a company against thee and they shall stone thee with stones and thrust thee through with their sword. And they shall burn thine houses with fire and execute judgments upon thee in the sight of many women. And I will cause thee to cease from playing the harlot. And thou also shall give no hire any more. So I will make my fury toward thee to rest. And my jealousy shall depart from thee. And I will be quiet. And will be no more angry. Because thou hast not remembered the days of thy youth. But hast fretted me in all these things. Behold, therefore I will also recompense thy way upon thine head, saith the Most High Yahweh. And thou shalt not commit this lewdness above all thine abominations. Behold, every one that uses proverb shall use this proverb against thee, saying, As the mother, so is her daughter. Thou art thy mother's daughter that loatheth her husband and her children. And thou art the sister of thy sisters, which loatheth their husbands and their children. Your mother was in Hittite, and your father an Amorite. That's how we started this off. Yeah. Brothers and sisters. He's, he's promising, and that's what the good thing about this, what we're going to read here as we go to the end tomorrow, we'll go to the end of this chapter, but at the end, he's not doing this for nothing. He's not, The Most High is not sedu- sed- uh, uh, sadistic in that he just wants to punish us. The level of punishment is equal to the level of anger and embarrassment that he feels after all he had done for our fathers. But he's bringing that also, that level of punishment is designed to bring a remnant out that's going to keep his commandments, that's going to obey him, that's going to come back, that's going to be sick in understanding what our fathers have done, that's going to be sick in understanding what is happening to our people. He's designing this to bring us out of it. He's designing this to bring us back to himself. It's not for nothing. It's for us to be made like the second Adam. It's for us to be made into the divine image of righteousness and truth. Brothers and sisters, this is the only way for us to escape. It starts with a spirit. We are born with a spirit of disobedience. We can receive the spirit of obedience. We can receive the spirit of righteousness. We can receive it through the Messiah, Yahweh Shah, from the Father. There's going to be, the word has gone forth from the Father. There's going to be a remnant. That's going to keep the commandments. That's going to obey the Father. There's going to be a remnant that's going to be reflective. And let me tell you, brothers and sisters, he's going to say himself in this very chapter and in this very book of Ezekiel. He's not doing this simply because he loves us. I mean, I'm not saying he loves us, but he does love us. But he's doing it for his holy name's sake and for the promise that he made to Abraham and for the promise that he made to Isaac. For the promise that he made to Yaakov. For the promise that he gave to David the king. He's doing it for their sake. He's going to bring back the captivity. He's going to have a people that are obedient to him as a result of all this embarrassment. Yes, we were brought over here as slaves. No, they never intended for us to be equal with them. And they never will. Yes, we have been brought low. It's not accidental. But it's okay. He designed it for us to trust in him, not trust on all these churches in every corner, but to trust in his spirit of righteousness, trust in his word alone. That we might be made into his image. He's going to make it come to pass for his name's sake, for his holy name's sake, because as we stated earlier, and as the word states, there is none higher. There is none higher. 